Hey everybody. Hello, hello. I just want to make sure that we are on. All right, looks like we're working here. Give me a moment. I just want to make sure I can see your comments if you do have any. All righty. Yay, I see some love coming in. Hey everyone, it seems to be working. So I just wanted to make sure it was all set up before I dove in to our content for today, but happy MPA Monday. It's Angie here, and I'm an interpreter for California State Parks. I'm going to give people just a moment to join us before I get started so that we can kind of gather our audience. If you've been following along with our live streams and you've been enjoying them, go ahead and click share, and then you can kind of watch this video with uh, other people that you're Facebook friends with that maybe you can't physically be with right now, um, but you are connected with online. And if you can see me, hear me, throw me a thumbs up or a like or a comment or whatever you like to do, that would be awesome. I'm gonna give people just another moment to join us. Take my glasses off. Happy Monday, I hope everyone's doing well today at the start of a new week. And I know that right now is sort of a strange time for all of us. I know that many of you are sheltering in place still and um, doing your part to protect yourselves and your communities and your families. And on behalf of you know, our interpreters up here in the North Coast Redwoods District, we so appreciate you um, supporting us in what we're doing and following those kind of safe guidelines for sheltering in place and social distancing. Up here in the North Coast Redwoods District, we are doing a lot of work to do that very same thing. So often teleworking, um, sanitizing all of our equipment and all of that good stuff, washing our hands, using hand sanitizer, really just taking all of those precautions so that um, we, can, we can stay safe as a community and still connect with all of our audiences online. So thanks for those of you who have been returning to our live streams week after week. It's fun to sort of recognize your names and recognize your pictures and, and know that you've been here supporting us for the last uh, geez, almost month and a half now. So we really appreciate you and we love having you here. And for those of you who are new to our live streams, thanks for being here. We do live streams every single day of the week at 3 p.m. on this page. So please do follow along. You can like our page and you'll be notified when we go live. You can also follow us on Instagram at north underscore coast underscore redwoods, where we have lots of fun content as well. For those of you who maybe are um, not familiar with our home learning programs. California State Parks and interpreters all over the state are offering free home learning programs for kids who are learning at, um, at home right now. So you can log in um, and register for programs by going to ports-ca.us. And we have programs for uh, students of all ages Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. So come check us out, it's super fun. I just finished one and uh, got to connect with some really awesome students around the world and around, around the state and around the world, which is awesome. So all of that housekeeping stuff out of the way. Hi, everybody. It's good to be here with you. I am Angie and I'm an interpreter for California State Parks. And for those of you who don't know me or recognize me, I am our Marine Protected Area Interpreter up here in Northern California. So every Monday, I come on here at three o'clock and talk about our marine environment, our MPAs, um, or our marine protected areas. So they're basically places that are a lot like parks, but they're underwater. They're places that protect animals, protect their habitats, and are really keeping in mind sort of the, um, the value of our biodiversity and our living ecosystems that exist underwater, just like the ones that we honor and visit and protect in our parks. So, I, a couple weeks ago, I introduced you to some fish that are really important to me. I have them here to remind you. I'm actually in our green screen studio today, which is really fun because I can do cool tricks like this. Whoa. I don't know what that looks like for you, but pretty cool. Um, it's a little windy today. And since I just had a program, I thought this would be a great 
day to show you our green screen and actually take you underwater, show you a cool underwater video. Um, but I was just saying that a couple weeks ago, I introduced you to some great fish called the vermilion rockfish. Of course, we know this one's seven years old and this one's 18 years old. And if you missed that video, if you just go back to the videos in our Facebook, on our Facebook page, you can find that. Uh, I forget what date it was, but there's a picture of me like holding this fish, really excited looking. So you all learned if you've watched that video that these bigger, older fish that often live in marine protected areas have exponentially more babies. And basically we have bigger and older fish in our MPAs because there's one thing that we do or that MPAs do to help leave these fish in the ocean, which is humans aren't allowed to take them out of their home. So we aren't allowed to fish for them, to eat them or sell them or anything like that. So they are more likely to grow bigger and older. And you also learned that the babies that these fish have are um, very small. They're the size of your eyelash, basically. And those eyelash size babies travel far and wide using ocean currents and sort of the motion of the ocean to move around. And um, that's a really important part of the, the way MPAs were designed in California. And that contributes to this thing called the spillover effect, which is what I wanna talk about today. Um, and kind of ties back to that idea of our big old fertile female fish or our boffs. So I'll show you this little underwater video that is just so inspiring. You can see um, the amazing kind of biodiversity or the variety of life that lives in our MPAs from marine mammals to invertebrates to fish to algae and all of the places that they live. Um, a lot of this footage was, is from uh, the Channel Islands. And so a lot of these species live and thrive in our MPAs down there. But some of this footage is from Northern California as well. So if you are an ocean lover or an ocean explorer yourself, some of this might look familiar to you if you, if you dive or surf in California. So I thought I would just show that video to get you in the spirit <laughs> of MPA Monday. But today, like I said, I want to introduce you or kind of reintroduce you to the, this idea of the spillover effect. So one thing about these fish, the boffs, that um, I didn't really get into in the last video was that these fish, like I said, they have little eyelash size babies um, that kind of travel far and wide. But these fish themselves, they have a pretty small home range. So they're really home bodies. And a lot of us are practicing being homebodies right now, spending a lot of time at home, maybe just kind of hanging out in our neighborhood. And that's what these fish are like for most of their life. So like I said, they have a pretty small home range, meaning that they're more likely to be able to grow big and large because they might stay in a marine protected area for their entire life. But like I said before, those babies that they have, they travel far and wide. And that basically contributes to something um, that we call the spillover effect which basically means that as sort of um, diversity and abundance and biomass grows in our marine protected areas, it doesn't stay there along that border because there's really no walls or fences or anything keeping animals or their offspring from traveling in and out of MPA boundaries. So those um, benefits, those, that increase in biodiversity and in biomass spills over the edges of our MPAs and kind of contributes to the health of our overall ocean in California. So I have a fun demonstration to show you. I'm gonna put my glasses on so I can see if anybody had a question for me really quick. Can't wait to snorkel and dive in our MPAs again. Me too. Hey from Texas. Awesome, hi everybody. All right, so let's talk about the spillover effect. So here, da, 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 I have a blue tub <laughs> and this tub right here represents the ocean. Let's call it the Pacific Ocean or um, California's ocean, which basically um, our jurisdiction is from basically where the water meets the sand to about three miles out to sea. So our, the shape of California actually looks a little bit different than most of us um, recognize from a map. But of course, here's our ocean. So California's ocean. And I have a little jar right here that represents a marine protected area. 
So we're going to put our MPA in the ocean. And like I said before, of course, our MPAs don't have walls or boundaries that keep animals from moving in and out. But a lot of the animals that do benefit from MPAs, like I said before, they're generally um, have a small home range. So they hang out in one little area. They kind of swim around this zone and they might not actually ever leave the MPA in their life. Not that they know that that's happening, but we kind of designed our MPAs that way. And then here I have a whole fun tub of marine animals, all of which live in and uh, are protected by our MPAs, of course. And you might be able to guess what I'm going to do next, but to demonstrate the spillover effect, I'm going to go ahead and pour our animals into our MPA because, of course, within those boundaries of protection, those animals are growing bigger and larger and having lots and lots of babies that inevitably travel outside of the protected area. So let's see what happens. Remember, we're learning about the spillover effect. So I think you guys can see that okay. Uh, I'm going to hold it back here. Try not to spill too much. Remember the blue part is the ocean and the small kind of clear jar in the center is our MPA. So as our animals start to grow, have lots of babies, lots of offspring. Wow, look at that. They don't necessarily all fit in our MPA boundaries. So you can see here that, let me see if I can position this better for you. Our MPA is full of life, like you saw in these videos. We see marine mammals, invertebrates, fish, algae, lots of different habitats that they rely on. And we have these places that are brimming with biodiversity and life. Pretty amazing. And of course, the animals like the boffs, like those fish that I introduced you to, they grow bigger and older. And those babies that they have grow as they, um, or the number of babies that they can have grows as they get older. And then I'll go ahead and put our MPA down for a moment. You can see the rest of our ocean, California's ocean, has benefited from having marine protected areas because that life that kind of thriving biodiversity has spilled over into the surrounding waters. So um, you'll often see at a marine protected area, if you're, if you're MPA savvy you, um, and you want to go fishing some, somewhere, you might have a map with you. You might have an app that I use that's called uh, Fish Legal that helps you identify exactly where you are in comparison to where an MPA is. And it's not uncommon to see people fishing right next to an MPA. Hmm, why would they do that? You might think that might be a little risky if they're not exactly sure where the MPA is. But actually, if you can identify exactly where the boundary is using those tools, you can gain benefit from fishing right next to an MPA. Because like I said before, those animals don't sit along the line necessarily. There's a chance that they might spend their whole life in an MPA, but there's a good chance that they also travel in and out. So you might have a greater chance of catching um, more, catching bigger things if you're near an MPA, but of course you never want to fish inside of one. So I hope that makes sense. And I hope that um, this little demonstration has helped you understand the spillover effect and how MPAs benefit not just kind of within their boundaries, but places um, that are nearby as well. And I also just want to point out that here in California, we actually have 124 MPAs. They span, of course, uh, they're sort of distributed fairly equally between uh, the Oregon border to the north and the Mexico border to the south. And they're placed close enough together that those larvae that are kind of spilling out of the MPA have a good chance of actually landing in a next door MPA. And of course, if um, we're talking about something like our boffs, like our vermilion rockfish, the larvae that land in that neighboring MPA, they might spend their whole life in that neighboring MPA. And then the cycle kind of goes on and on. And um, MPAs really do share. So they're really good sharers. If you're maybe hoarding all the ice cream or all the dessert from whoever you're sheltering in place with, channel your MPA energy and sharing is caring. So 
Our MPAs share with surrounding waters using the spillover effect, and they're connected um, to other MPAs that are nearby. So I hope that makes sense. And I hope that was fun and informative for you. Thanks everybody for joining in. Type in any questions if you have any. Let's see. Hi, Garrett. <laughs> thanks, Dennis, Karina, Bud. Thanks for joining. So fun to see all of you. Oh, I forgot one thing. So next week for my MPA Monday live stream, I'm going to do something a little bit different, which is going to be a craft project. So during this time of sheltering in place, I find art to be very therapeutic and fun. And so I've come up with some MPA specific crafts for us to do together. So if you have kids or you are a kid like me, you're just a grown up kid, um, grown up kid, or you have a friend who has kids, please recommend this for them. I think it's going to be really fun. I'll show you right now what we're going to be making. And I find this to be um, a really great thing just for me to have on my desk because it makes me happy. But next week at three o'clock for MPA Monday, we are going to make an MPA in a jar. So right now it looks a little funky because there's green kelp here that is invisible on our green screen. But I'll hold this a little close so you can see. I have created a marine protected area in a jar including boths, some invertebrates like sea stars and purple urchins, maybe some cultural resources like treasure, <laughs> lots of kelp, um, some different ecosystems. We have a sandy bottom environment, a rocky reef environment, and then over here we have our kelp forest environment. And um, I'll just go ahead and tell you what kind of supplies we're going to need. So to make an MPA in a jar next week, you're going to need a jar, pretty simple. And um, we're going to need some rice or some um, salt. You can also use like dirt from your yard or gravel or whatever you have just to make like your sand in the bottom. You are going to need some construction paper with different colors, preferably, or um, just a blue piece of paper with some markers, some scissors, maybe some glue. And that's pretty much it. And we're going to work together to create an MPA in a jar. I find this really fun because I can stick my tools, maybe like my pens and pencils on my desk in this fun MPA reminder. So join us next week at three o'clock to build an MPA in a jar. I'm going to make a Facebook event for this. You can share it with all your friends that have little ones, or if you're a kid at heart like me and want to do something crafty next week, join us at three o'clock. Thanks everybody so much for being here. We so, so, so appreciate you and can't wait to connect with you again and see you in our parks very soon. See you soon. Bye.